Bookies. Today we are going to discuss books that I think should be considered modern classics. Let's get started. lot of discourse recently as there always is in the book community. I don't know why. We're here to read people. Just read. Sophia. Out of that. Bad girl. Bad girl. Go upstairs. Sorry, my dog was eating my dinner. Anyways. Uh, good God. I can't win for winning today. Um, so, um, there's been a discourse on TikTok. Uh, there was some little little girl on there and I say little because younger than me I can tell she's like in her teens um basically saying how she can tell when someone hasn't read uh, the classics and just basically down talking everyone now besides the obvious that the classics are inaccessible for numerous reasons that while you can get them in school in school the language is inaccessible to a lot of people and the fact that they're not inclusive at all and sometimes they talk about um and include really sensitive topics that are not adequately addressed in literature courses is inaccessible there's a whole plethora of things that are wrong with the classics, and I honestly believe, just, you know, going off on a tangent, I, I honestly believe that we should redo classes and how we, that we should redo English classes and maybe reassign some of the dusty classics that we are forced to read. Um, maybe reassign those to like a history class or a specific classical literature class. Um... While they are somewhat important, I think that modern language, um, which is what you're supposed to be studying in English um, for at least most of the part, I think that um, modern books should be taught in modern English. So that way you can examine how the English language is used nowadays. It just makes sense to me. But regardless, we are going to examine <laughs> what a classic book is. So I found this website. I'm going to link it down below. But it says the criteria to consider when defining classics. Um, because they, a lot of websites and dictionaries describe classics as, a, as, one, as books that you can reread to re-examine and rediscover new things. Which, in my opinion, is every book. <laughs> for numerous reasons um maybe not every book but like a good majority of books especially ones that we have nowadays you can reread and re-examine and discover something new with them but the criteria to consider when defining classic books one of them is age um which i'm not going to consider for my criteria today um because all of these are modern that's the point of this modern books that I think should be taught in English classes. Another one, Literary Merit, which basically are books that talk about um, important topics. I don't understand why some of the classics have literary merit, but regardless, literary merit. <laughs> um, historical Record and Influence, which some modern books have. Some other criteria, Rereadability, um, rereading offers a sense of discovery as the first reading. Again, majority of books. Never exhausted all it has to say to the readers. Again, some classic books. Did, uh, besides the point. And then that's basically it. There's like some other random criteria. But for this, I'm just going to ignore everything. But regardless, I have a stack of books over here. And some that I'm just going to pop to cover up because they're... I don't have them or that they're in various parts of my house and I'm too lazy to get it. Um, but these are books that I think offer all of those things, but also um, should be taught in modern day English class because they either use e the English language in um, a different manner than what um, is commonly thought of 
or because it has something important to say that I think trans will transcend the time period that it was wrote in, which is, you know, recently, like within the last couple of years, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to start off this list. I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, first one is Furia uh, by Yamil Syed Mendez. In this one, the main character um, is wanting to play football, but her parents will not let her. Along the same vein, we have Knockout, which I will get to in a second. Um, but both of these books examine parental influence um, and parental wants and stuff like that, which I think is very interesting for books nowadays. Think of um, I'm not I'm not your perfect Mexican daughter. That one is a perfect example of family expectations put upon a young person. And these books also talk about identity and forming your own person outside of your family um, and their expectations. So again, I think that this one will transcend time because um, every teen has to figure out who they are outside of their family uh, for better or worse. Um, along the same vein, the knockout, but this one, the parents are supportive of the main character's um, decision to participate in Muay Thai, um, which is a um, basically a kick, um, kickboxing, boxing um, type of sport. Um, but her community does not. She is Indian. Um, and so while Furia and I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter discusses family's influence on an individual, their, um, an individual family member and them trying to figure out how to become their own, um, person, their own identity. This one looks at it from a community, um, perspective where the, um, person is trying to decide who they are when the, their community does not support them and who they are outside of that community and who they are with that with that culture and community regardless of what the immediate immediate members of that community thinks that they are um, both of them offer really great commentary on that again should be taught in class i think that english classes could also take a look at how music um is sometimes used in books to present a message or to um give an underlying feeling of the book, what, um, whatever that may be. I think the perfect one that fits this is The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. Um, in this one, it is a futuristic set book, a dystopian, where aliens have overrun the world, um, and our main character has been smuggling books to save them because they have been destroyed by the aliens when she is found out by another alien, um, and he's kind of chill with it. They go on this cross-country adventure to um, figure out what to do about this and to stop and fleeing and stuff like that. But it uses music throughout this book to describe the feelings that the characters are feeling, um, to give an underlying message about um, togetherness and unity despite um, obvious obstacles and differences um, and opinions of what should happen on earth this is a marvelous book um a hidden gem if you may i think that this one should also be taught in english classes i also think books that talk about modern day issues should be taught in um english classes if we're going to talk about um modern language and stuff like that especially books like you truly assumed by layla sabrine um this one does really good it's a multi pov about these three teens who um, after a terrorist attack but that was done by a white man, um, experience Islamophobia within their communi uh, communities. The way that they band together is by blogging, and they all contribute to this blog that receives an extreme amount of hatred because of said Islamophobia. I think that this book has a lot to say and can teach a lot of students um, about what Islamophobia looks like and also... Um, about connection with other people across the world, the United States, through one singular thing, that being the blog. Another book that looks at modern issues that modern teenagers are facing today is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. In this one, the main character is non-binary. They come out as non-binary to the parents and they are kicked out of their house. Um, and when they move in with their sister, they are having to kind of rediscover who they are 
and figure out what they are going to do with this new situation. This speaks true to a lot of teens that find themselves in the same exact situation every year um, due to a variety of reasons. Um, but they come out and they are disowned by their parents, their family, what have you. I uh, think books like this examine the heart of the matter and provide an in-depth analysis as to how that affects all of the members of the of this particular family. And this book can also help a lot of teens. I know that it has actually helped a lot of teens when they have read this book and have um, wrote testimonials and reviews about this book. Um, so yeah, I think this one, if we're going to, if we're going to live in a world where some people are not accepted for who they are, I think books like this should exist in English classes. So that way we can examine the why. Another one that is along the same veins of I wish you all the best is The Honeys by Ryan LaSala. And this one, um, our main character is gender nonconforming. Their sister who goes to this summer camp, the summer preparatory camp, um, comes back and tries to kill our main character. The main character decides to go to the summer camp in their sister Steed when she unexpectedly dies that same night and trying to figure out what is happening. This one examines what it means to be gender queer and also all of the and also some of the prejudice um, and discrimination that the main character faces is detailed in this. I think it is a really good work because the ending offers really good visual theme of um, the heart of the message of this book. Um, and it's just a really good story overall. Um, again, another modern issue that should be talked about, one that will transcend ages. One that might not transcend ages depending on how we as a society decide to move forward um, is the taking of Jake Livingston. I think for modern day that this is a very important read that should be taught to, because not only does it talk about racism and stuff like that, but it also talks about school shootings. Um, in this one, our main character, his name is Jake. He um, is clairvoyant. He can see ghosts, talk to them, etc., etc. Um, but he doesn't really like his powers. On the other hand, there is a malevolent ghost named Sawyer who committed a school shooting and is still um, bloodthirsty and vengeant um, and looking for vengeance. So I think that the book does really good to talk about both sides. Um, and I know that there's really not a both sides, but um, the why as to what, uh, why Sawyer did this, um, what transpired prior to that happening. And it does really good to talk about social commentary that is very important for today's teen. Along the same lines, I think that Ace of Spades could also work out as a modern classic. Um, in this one, it's told in multi-POV. Our two main characters are the only black kids at their kind of ritzy private school. And um, when they are targeted by their class, um, they work together to figure out what is happening, um, why they are being targeted. Um, the book goes a lot into white supremacy and how deep-rooted it is, and it's definitely worth a reread because after you reread it, you do see a lot of the cracks and stuff, the dog whistles, um, you may say. I think that that one is very important, especially today, because a lot of people don't, um, see dog whistles at the get-go a lot of times. So I think that it is definitely worth a reread and I think it will transcend time as well. I think for modern classics you can also still include books that are set in a historical fiction um, setting but, but offer commentary on things that are important for um, students' education today. A good example of this is Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. In this one, our main character is a mermaid, um, and it talks a lot about the slave trade, um, how they became a mermaid, etc., etc., like that. It has a lot of beautiful, stunning visual theming to it, and it offers a lot of great social commentary that is important for today. I also think that The Silence of Bones by June Her is also an important and should, could be considered a classic. Um, this is a thriller story about a serial killer uh, that is loose in 1800s um, Joseon um, area, which is in, I think, Korea? I'm pretty sure Korea. Uh, 
yeah, Korea. Um, so 1800s Joseon, Korea area. Um, this one, it talks a lot about societal expectations, um, which are accurate to that time period, but also um, can be discussed in modern day theming. The main character is, um, has a lot of societal expectations placed on her. They value like silence and obedience to uh, women like her, um, but she does not cooperate with that. And I think that is very important to this story um, because it leads to them finding the serial killer and all of this other stuff that happens during the investigation. Um, a very important book that I think it was going to be very important for um, modern day teenagers to realize that sometimes they need to break societal norms and speak up in a sense. Literally, figuratively, whatever. Sometimes you need to speak up. I also think in general that modern classics should strive to be as diverse as pop possible. I've included already sent a lot of diverse picks, but I wanted to pick a couple more. Um, that ones that I know will transcend time, that will be forever classics, and that will, um, and should be, and that should be taught in English classes or at least assigned reading in classes in order to um, bring inclusivity into classes. The first one being We Had the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. And this one it sold in multi POV. The, the first one being a girl who is a hunter who goes into a cursed forest to uh, to hunt and feed her people um, but she does it disguised as a boy. The other one a prince who assassinates people that disrespect his father the Sultan. Um, this one while it is fantasy um, I think it offers a lot for inclusivity and also it really it does really really well at world building and showcases a lot of um, literary themes and stuff which are very important and I think should be taught um, to students to showcase how um, writing should be done basically like we can study Edgar Allan Poe all day and learn about like poetry and stuff like that but modern day you're going to need a book like We Hunt the Flame or Ray Bear to tell you how to convey a really good story a lot through um, using different senses. Um, both of these authors use um, different forms of world building in order to convey um, how their world looks, feels, smells, uh, touches, stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, Ray Bear, again, um, by Jordan I. Fuego, a really good example of world building and complex world building, but done in such a really well done, simple manner. Um, how multiple themes can be conveyed at once, again, very simply. Um, this would be really good for, like, if not English classes, um, creative writing classes which is why I think that this will transcend time as well. Another offer that I think does really good at the world building and multiple theming and stuff like that that um, is important for teaching students how to convey uh, different ideas and notions um, in their writing is Deep in Providence by Briss M. Nelson. I think that this one does really good at showing how multi-POVs um, should be done and how it can be um, done in such a way to convey multiple storylines at once but still keep the same plot of the book moving forward. Also this book talks a lot about grief which a lot of young people experience and I think is a very important um, read to help to help students um, learn how to cope with grief and stuff like that. I also think that modern classics um, can be retellings. <laughs> I think that retellings are going to be the future and help students uh, learn about the older classics um, through them because they are more accessible. Stuff like um, Scavenge the Stars, which is a Count of, Mon uh, a Count of Monte Cristo retelling, um, it does really good and offers a lot of inclusivity. Same with Within These Wicked Walls. This is a Jane Eyre retelling, but it's Ethiopian setting and culture in it. It's very rich in Ethiopian cultures and stuff like that. Or, you know, books like The House of Salt and Sorrow by Aaron A. Craig, which is 
a 12 dancing princesses retelling um but it's done in a completely different tone um so while the 12 dancing princesses is kind of like this light and fluffy story this one takes it and makes it really gothic and dark um which i think is also really interesting to showcase to your students to showcase how you can retheme a work um and make it your own i also think that english classes can use different storytelling to convey um you know some of the same theming and stuff like that that we previously discussed so books like squire um which talk about a girl who is born of a class that is hated upon that is discriminated against um joins an army and figures out that actually the army is going to be fighting against her very own people um this book is t entirely told in graphic novel format and i think that graphic novel formats and audiobooks stuff like that um are a missed opportunity in english classes we can take these works which are just as valid as um tomes texts and stuff like that and use them to also convey um, what they need to in English classes. So that was just a brief overview of books that I think are modern classics. I don't think that you need to read classics. I really don't think that you, like, maybe for a grade, but beyond that, I don't think it's required to be a, a bookstagrammer, a book talker in the book community at all. I've read some classics. I used to be a classic snob, and then I grew up. <laughs> um nobody nobody got time for that um you don't need to read them you can read better books instead you can read the books that are um that are taking um classics such as like little women and making it more diverse little women has um been uh a Little Women retelling by Bethany C Morrow set during the reconstruction era of America um has an all-black girl cast called So Many Beginnings, which I think is a better story than Little Women. A lot of authors are doing that now, and I think that that is something that um, is way more accessible to um, everyone nowadays. So lastly, I have, a f I have a couple other books that I don't have with me right now that I want to um, shout out that I think should also be considered to be taught in English classes right now for various reasons. A lot of them because it talks about um, society, um, social commentary, um, historical matters that should be looked at. Um, because unfortunately when you look at a lot of the classics that you look at were really kind of stuck in stories that are from like at least two decades, three decades old at this point. I think that more recent times should be showcased. So I think books like Legend Born, The Hate You Give, The Door of No Return, um, Internment, which is futuristic, but it talks about um, and pays homage to events that could have happened and have happened and that may happen, unfortunately, in the future. And We Are Not Free. I think all of those offer really important social commentary context that is important for um, modern day students to be learning about and reading. So yeah, that is everything um, on my list. Uh, TLDR, classics are not accessible. Read what you want, but make sure you're reading diversely. And read, read books that are classic retellings by authors that make it diverse. They're much better. Anyways, thank y'all for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.